Welcome everybody to today's broadcast. Thanks for joining us. My name is Dale and joining me today is Christian Harris from Seattle. And we're really excited today to talk about automation in your real estate business. We'll be talking about workflows and CRMs and systems and um, some nerdy things, but we're going to be relating that to what we can all be doing better to win more business. So like I said, joined by Christian. Hello, Christian. Thanks for joining me. Sure. Good to be here. Um, and Christian, how long have you been using Realvolve? Uh, about six years now. Okay. Fantastic. So Christian's going to tell us all about what he's doing with workflows uh, and how that's changed his business. I want to just point out one thing before we get into it. Um, we have a Q&A and we have a chat. And we would love to interact with you. So if you have any questions or comments, chime in. I've also got a couple of staff members on with us today. So if there's any questions that come in um, that they can field, they will. And if it needs to go to Christian or I, they'll send it our way. So please be active in there. Say hi. Tell us where you're uh, calling in from today. Where are you joining us from? Um, Christian's in Seattle. I'm in Colorado Springs area. And we'd love to know where you're calling from today, joining us from. So, um, Christian, let's get into it. I um, am really excited to talk about you and your business because things have changed for you um, over the last, I guess, maybe 10 years. Tell me a little bit about your journey um, in real estate and what things have changed over the last couple of years and then maybe even the last year? Sure. Um, so I've been in the business about eight years now. Um, started off you know, with a la large franchise in the area and within a few years um, decided that I was going to try to do things differently. Launched my own independent real estate brokerage, did that for about three years. And then when the pandemic hit, uh, decided to cut cut all ties and, uh, and overhead and transition my my real estate brokerage into a team model and moved over to, to eXp Realty. Um, but about you know, six years ago, I, I discovered Realvolve, um, and uh, I guess that's why I'm why I'm on here today is is because I'm I'm kind of a nerd, uh, love efficiency and processes, um, and and so the real the real you know problem I had with with CRMs was that you know most of them well, I almost say most of them a lot of them are either you know too too simple and rudimentary and they're basically a glorified address book and don't do much. Um, you know, might as well have an Excel sheet if you're going to do that. Um, and also, uh, or on the other side, they're too complicated uh, to to use. And so, you know, agents just would, wouldn't use them. And so I finally uh, heard about Realvolve and I, when I found it. I'm like, yes, I, fa I found it. I found the holy grail of CRMs, um, you know, because it's it's easy to use, but it's also really robust and, and powerful. So you can do a lot with it. Um, and to me, the workflows and automation are really the backbone uh, of my business and why it's so powerful to me. Love that. Thank you for the intro. Um, so yeah, we've got people from all over the place today, Seattle, coastal Maine, Reno, Tahoe, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Colorado Springs. And by the way, Tahoe, that's, I grew up in Northern California. So I would, in the wintertime, I was in Tahoe two, three times a week, South Lake Tahoe doing some skiing and snowboarding. Um, Granbury, Texas, Two from Granbury, Texas, Vacaville, Santa Cruz, California. Love Santa Cruz. I went to high school in Gilroy, and so we spent a lot of time in Santa Cruz when I was in high school. All right, so um, we'll get into that. We'll get into that, Joanna. She's asking, how is Realvolve different than real estate CRM? So yeah, we will certainly get to that. Um, we got Florida, Massachusetts, man. We got coast to coast, north and south. So thanks everybody for joining. So Christian, you and I talked a little bit about this, but I'd love to hear your take on why automation matters so much. Um, and can you expand upon your point about CRMs just being kind of an address book? Uh, some of them are really simple. Some of them are too complicated. You feel like Realvolve was the, good, the, the right fit for you. So can you talk about those two things for us? Sure. Um, I mean, you have to really think about okay, what what's the point of CRM? It's to to keep your your database, your contacts organized, um, and so you can do that really rudimentary with some simple some simple things. You know, um, the well, I think it goes one layer 
one layer deeper though, right? Like yes. why do we want to keep track of our, our contacts? I mean, I, I'd say, cause if you, if you don't, I mean, you're missing out on business, you know, and, and that's what um, a lot of agents do uh, kind of anecdotally. What I saw when I first got into, into the business, you know, there, my office was right across the hall from, uh, you know, top producer. She's been you know doing it for 30 years, really successful. Um, but she was running around, you know, with her hair on fire all the time, just always stressed out, always, you know, tapped out. And, and I think part of it was because uh, she was very old school, like her CR, her CRM uh, was a yellow notepad. And I'm just like, that's no way to run a business. I, I do not want to do that. Like, I don't care how successful I am. If I'm stressed out, my quality of life stinks and I'm dropping balls because I don't have a, a process or system. Um, and I'm spending all my time, you know, redundancies, you know, cause I mean, every time you have a new client, a new buyer, a new seller, like you're, you're writing the same emails, you're making the same phone calls, you're sending the same text messages. Why spend all that time, you know, reduplicating things when you can, you can automate it or have templates set up um, with processes and, and checklists and that, that sort of thing. So for me, it was so that I could handle more business, better, less stressed and not, uh, not drop balls, you know, so really having that process enables you to do more, at a higher level. So, I mean, that, that for me was mm. really why Realval was so revolutionary with its, its workflows. Um, yeah. So, and, and I think we'll Can probably give me some of those weeds here, but. Yeah. And give me one example, I guess, just a quick high level example about, because you said better, better customer service, less time, less stress. Yep. Um, tell me why and how better. Sure. Um, I mean, if, if you have a process for something, if you figure out a good way to do it and then you systematize it, you document it, and then you can replicate that, you can leverage yourself. You, you can say, okay, this, mm-hmm. you know, the way I do business works, here's how I do it. And now, you know, once you, you document it, not only can uh, the system take care of some of that, but you know, once you, you know, there's certain things that you need a human for. And so you can hand that off to an assistant or to a TC or whatever. But if you don't ever have anything written down, there's no system, there's no process, it bottlenecks with you and how much you can handle personally. Yeah, that's a really good point because I just talked to a lot of people that, you know, when we first start talking, they, they talk about what they do for their customers, what they do for their past clients how they stay in touch and keep tabs on people. And a lot of them are really good at it. Mm-hmm. When you're comparing them to the other average human being and how well they can remember things and juggle tasks, and maybe they're above average uh, at their threshold of juggling balls. But isn't there always another level you can go to when you start adding in automation? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I mean, you know, it's kind of... Uh kind of a cliche, whatever, but we talk about, you know, being able to scale your business to, to be able to, to leverage technology uh, to, to take it to the next level. And that, and that's what automation and workflows uh, enable you to, you to do. Um, you know, I, I've seen in real estate kind of two, two main camps. There's kind of the, the person that rejects technology because they're too busy or they've never done it that way. Um, and they figure, you know, the way they've been doing it works, which you know, may be true, but at some point, you know, you've only got so much time in the day. And if you're spending it doing low level tasks that you can automate or, or systematize, you're, you're, you know, you're going to limit yourself. And the other side is, are, are the people who gravitate towards, you know, the shiny new uh, sexy tech. Um, and so I always try to take a step back and say, okay, what's before I adopt a new technology or automation or process, what's, what's the purpose of it? What, what problem is this solving for me? And if I don't have the problem that it's trying to solve, then I'm just wasting my time you know, and money trying to adopt something. Um, and so I think that's really what we need to do is asking you know, why and what's the outcome? What's the goal I'm trying to achieve? And when it comes to... Mm-hmm you know, to automation workflows, the, the goal is to eliminate the redundancy of data entry, the redundancy of tasks that you find yourself doing all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. So then you could spend your time doing the higher level tasks instead of the, the rudimentary, you know, low, uh, low dollar value tasks. Yeah. And, th- and so there's a trade-off though, right? Because you do have to set it up. All of us would hear you say, reduction in data entry, reduction in repetitive tasks, not having to rethink the wheel. And we think that sounds amazing. That sounds fantastic. Sign me up. But all of us know that there's always, there's, there's a catch sure. that you have to put in some work to get it set up and to learn it. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you approach that and what your opinion is on any investment that you have to make in technology? 
Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes it, it, it can be painful you know, to start off. You, it, I mean, I'm, I'm a very, I think very, very linearly. Um, and so processes make a lot of sense to me. Um, and I actually kind of enjoy them. So I'm kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> I, when I, when I first ad adopted Realvolve, um, it's, you know, getting the workflows set up was really the challenging part, you know, not, not because, uh, of the system, but just because you've got to figure out a way to get what you know in your head, uh, documented mm -hmm. into into whatever the uh, the system is and so i was you know on a christmas break you know visiting the in-laws on the other side of the country i'm like i'm just going to sit down for a week i'm going to document you know exactly how i do things write my list what i need to do and then i create the workflows from scratch out of that um and i know we'll, i think we'll probably talk about it a little bit a little bit later but you know if this is something that uh the the, the watchers the viewers uh find interesting, but they're like, I don't even know where to start. You know, if someone could just do it for me, um, you know, I do have my workflows available, you know, in real volume in the library um, for pretty, pretty affordable. Um, and that's really a great way to start, you know, uh, obviously real estate's different state to state, but if you have the process kind of outlined, uh, it's a lot easier than building it from scratch. Um, you know, if you can adopt someone else's process and then tweak it to, you know, your own way of doing business or your, your state's requirements. Yeah, got it. So getting a head start, utilizing those, uh, some initial workflows really helps people because you're, I guess it's, it's more like throwing up new paint um, and maybe changing a couple of fixtures in a house that's already built rather than having to start from, from the foundation, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and right now we're talking, you know, kind of big level, like what the, the point of it is and, and what it will do for your business. Um, I don't know if, if we want to get into some specifics, like how I use it, you know, I've got workflows for, you know, working with buyers that have, you know, checklists. And uh, once I complete a checklist. Well, you know what? I'll... Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you. Maybe what I'll do. Um, I want to, I'm going to share a couple of screens about what our workflow platform is. Okay. So maybe I'll just spend two minutes on that really quick. And then I'd love for you to talk to our audience about how you're using those workflows, if that's okay. Sure. That's great. Sorry. So, sorry to interrupt you there. Let me just see if I can share the right screen. I have a couple of different screens I'm going to be sharing here today. All right. So a lot of automation in real estate, right? So we're talking about a CRM. I don't want to spend too much time on the, on the super basic, but a CRM client relationship management software, most of the systems out there that you'll see built specifically for real estate have the ability to build campaigns. And that's really the, uh, the beginning and end of the automation that you're going to get with a CRM is usually some sort of a campaign. And typically in our experience, I would say 90% or more of the systems out there are geared toward leads. It's about lead nurturing, lead conversion, lead generation. And what we've done with our platform in Realvolve is made it from end to end in the client journey. So from a lead to you know, pre-listing or you get a, a, a buyer contract all the way through the close of the transaction or the sell, sale of the home and then into past client follow-up. And what we've done with our workflows is we've made them a little bit more um, broad, I guess, or more customizable than the typical campaigns. And that allows you to do some really cool things with the system. So you can build out process flows to help with project management, task assignment, delegation to other people on your team, as well as sending emails, sending text messages, and putting appointments on your calendar. And we can mix and match all of this automation into one workflow. And so what you're seeing on the screen here would be an example of a workflow for a listing appointment. It starts with a listing appointment. And if you don't get it, it goes off on a branch. If they didn't make a decision, it goes off on a different branch. And if you get the listing contract, it goes out into a third branch. And so what you're doing when you're using the workflows is you're just having to go in and look at the checklist or the task that you're supposed to complete. And our system is smart enough to take you to the next correct step based on what has been happening in real life and in real time. And so our workflows are so far uh, and above what a campaign is. It is a campaign. It can be just a simple campaign. You can also go all, the whole different direction with it and do automations and project plans and listing coordination and communication and all kinds of really cool things. So that's the almost the quickest I can explain it. There's a lot more to what we do in our automation, but 
Christian, I want to throw it back over to you. What are you using workflows for primarily in your business? Sure. There's, there's three main workflows that I, I, that I use and that I've built out. Uh, one's working with buyers. Um, and that walks me from, you know, I've, I've acquired a buyer client. They want to start looking for house and it, it walks me through, you know, a checklist of, okay, get them set up on the MLS or, you know, real scouts, uh, you know, which is what I use, you know, for, for automated home, uh, home buyer searches and stuff walks me through the process. Uh, once, you know, I've done that, it triggers a email template that I can, I can tweak basically says, you know, you know, welcome, uh, to the C-Town team. Uh, here's what to expect and here's how, uh, and we just set you up with this home search. Let me know if you need me to tweak it. Um, and so then it has, you know, uh, follow-up emails, uh, you know, once a week or, or whatever to, to touch base with them to, to make sure they're getting what they want. They have any questions. They want to go look at houses. You know, once we start looking at houses, they want to make an offer. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, workflow for that. You know, okay, we made an offer. We got it accepted. Okay, here's, here's the, uh, it transitions into the next workflow, which is the, the actual transaction of buying a house. And all has all the due dates, has the, the people that are involved, you know, so you've got the mortgage broker, you've got escrow, you got title, obviously the, the, the buyer myself. And so it's, it's smart and knows, you know, okay, at this point, it's going to trigger this email that goes to this person with this attached, you know, purchase and sale agreement or whatever. Um, and so mm -hmm. really all that stuff you would normally manually be doing via your, you know, your independent uh, email and trying to remember your checklists and all the things. Um, so this is you know, an example on the, on the listing side. So we've got you know workflow for for listings, preparing the listing, which is which is what you're looking at here. If you notice under the the picture there, <clears throat> it says pre-listing. So that's the status it's in. So these are all you know everything in gray there is a, a basically a placeholder for a, a due date or something that's going to happen. Um, all the blue ones are are things that I'm going to take care of myself. All the green items are ones that can be delegated to a a TC or an assistant. Uh, the red red items are like these are big important things that are going to trigger the next step of the workflow. Um, and so it's, I've color coded it to make it super easy and visual. So, you know, I can look at the calendar and say, okay, these things are due. Once they're due, it'll trigger the next thing or trigger an email. Um, you know, we haven't even talked about uh, integrating with other, other platforms, which is really one of the big reasons I started using this as well is you can use a, a tool like Zapier. And for example, you know, when I get a new client, I have an automated portion of this that automatically adds that client to my my Mailchimp newsletter. Um, you know, and so that that's one less data entry point I have to do. Um, if someone, you know, as a, as a side note, I guess if someone signs up for that Mailchimp email separately, it'll automatically add them into my CRM as a contact and tag them like where it came from. Um, and then there's some other stuff like if you're working with leads, a lot of time you'll get. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of time you'll get an email uh, saying, hey, you've got a new lead. Uh, typically, those emails are going to be formatted the exact same. So you can use uh, you know, Zapier to send that to a dedicated email uh, address, which will then add them to your contacts, tag them where they came from, and start a, a lead follow-up uh, workflow that has, you know, you, like I've got it set up so that they're automated. The emails are automated, the text messages are automated, uh, or you could have it so that it just cues you to do it, or it has it templated and you can customize it depending on you know, what that person, you know, where they came from, what their needs are, uh, and then remind you to, to give them a phone call as well. So it's super customizable um, and really, really flexible. Yeah, so I'm just gonna translate uh, a little bit of what you said and add some emphasis. So correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but I want to restate because Everybody uses Realvolve a little bit differently. There's not one way to use our platform. So that's a, a strength of ours and it's also a weakness of ours. So I just want to highlight a couple of things you just said. Number one, we're looking at a calendar for one of your listings that's in pre-listing status right now. Yep. And this calendar was generated by Realvolve based on your task list and your workflow. Mm -hmm. So what you, you did is you, you, created this listing, which essentially just means the information here at the top is all you needed, right? The address, the MLS Correct. number, the listing price, the listed date, expiration date. Yep. So we're going to put pre-list in here and then you're going to go to start a workflow. And the workflow is going to then tell you which tasks need to be assigned, ask you for some dates. And once you plug those in, it creates this calendar that's specific to this listing that also rolls up to your main calendar as well. So you have a master calendar with everything on it. 
But every contact, every listing, every transaction that you're working, you can filter the calendar by that category or listing or, or, or transaction. Exactly. I and then look. you've also, yeah. yeah. And then, and then you've got the color coding system that's also built into the workflows. So you've created your own color coding system that means something to you. Mm-hmm. The, the red things are the most important things. I think you said the green things are things you can delegate. Exactly. They're, they're based on who, uh, who is it assigned, who the task is assigned to on the back end. Yeah. And then the gray is, um, placeholder dates. Deadlines. Yep. Yeah. Placeholders. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, and so the beautiful that's... thing about this is, is that it's dynamic too. So let's say our list date changes. When I change that list date here, it adjusts all of them because they're all associated with starting, uh, in accordance with that list date. So it's, I don't have to manually go through here and readjust every single task. Yeah. So you can change one date, like photography date, that's not going to affect everything else. But if you want to change the whole timeline, you can change just the list date and it kind of changes the whole timeline and shifts it back. Exactly. That's pretty cool. So there's also, I just want to make one other point. There's also just a task list associated with it. So you can view it in the calendar view, um, but you can also just get your task lists and a task will be read once it's past due. It'll show up in your list. You can lump them together by property, by transaction, so you can see them all in one spot, or you can just filter by date and priority and just see everything that you're supposed to get done today um, and what's past due. Um, So let me ask you this. Do you use the, do you use the team views quite a bit then? Um, when you're looking at the tasks associated with this listing, for example, are you going to mm-hmm. pull up your, your assistance task list and how often do you look at that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I check that pretty, pretty re- regularly. Um, one of the things I like about Realvolve is that it's, it's really simple to, to be able to see what you need to do. And there's multiple ways to look at it, depending on if you just want like a list that has a date next to it versus, you know, I'm very mm-hmm. visual. So I enjoy looking at, uh, looking at the calendar view. So typically, you know, if, if there's, like if I'm getting ready for a listing and I know there's a lot of tasks associated with that, I'm just going to look at this view with, with that specific property. If it's just a regular day and I know there's nothing super pressing, I'm going to look at my, my master calendar. It's going to have every listing, every, every lead, every, you know, client, uh, past client follow-up event. And that's going to tell me, okay, on this day, uh, oh yeah, check in with, with this, uh, this buyer client, you know, from 30 days ago. And, associated with that contact is going to have, you know, all of their notes. And so I know exactly where, where they are in the process. So it's going to have, you know, my, my ongoing transactions, they're in escrow, my pre-listings, uh, their properties, you know, in, in the system, and then my contacts. Um, and, and it'll tell me, you know, everything that I have uh, associated with those things and the tests to do on that day. Love it. So I just want to get to a couple of comments that I've seen in the chat here. So first of all, Jesse is asking about mortgage. Uh, is, is this tailored to your mortgage brokerage business? Um, no, this is tailored specifically to residential real estate, but I will say we have plenty of people that are in, uh, they do maybe residential real estate and property management. Some people do residential and commercial. Um, we do have some dedicated commercial agents and property managers using it. We have some mortgage loan officers using it. Um, one of my good friends uh, up in Denver, it's a mortgage broker. He uses it all the time, loves it. So we have lots of people using because there's lots of overlap, but there, you might find that there's a few things missing or you might have to do some workarounds for some things. But uh, a lot of the dates and the party members and everything is going to be very similar, uh, if not identical to what you need. Um, I'd recommend getting on the phone with us, do a quick demo. You can go to realvolve.com forward slash demo and then get to the bottom of whether it's going to work for you or not just based on your individual use case and how you use it. So that goes for everybody on the call. If you're curious, please chat with us. Uh, I promise we won't bite. And we're here to help. We're not here to get people into something that they don't want to get into. So ask questions. Uh, We'll find out if it's a good fit. And we always say that no is a perfectly acceptable answer. So um, one other question that came up earlier, Sorry, Dale, go ahead, Christian, before you move on, um, on, on that case, I will say it, it's super flexible. Yes. It's built for, you know, residential real estate. Um, but like I, I, you know, if there's anything you find yourself doing all the time or emails or processes uh, I've customized this for, for that. Uh, for example, I've, I teach a, a regular home buyer class. And so there's always, you know, an email sequence 
to that to go before, or after, follow up, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's a you know Eventbrite. And so I was able to connect Eventbrite to this. So when someone signs up for that uh, for that event, it automatically pushes them as a contact into my CRM, tags them. Uh, so it's all ready to go, you know, as far as a, a follow-up sequence. Um, I also have a, a real estate podcast, um, Re Rethink Real Estate. And uh, and when we have a guest on, there's obviously an email sequence following up. And then afterwards, you know, how to share their episode um, and, and that sort of thing. And so I created a workflow for my for my podcast uh, guest, you know, for that. So, I mean, that's obviously has nothing to do with real estate, but it's something that I was doing all the time. Like it systemizes it, makes it so I don't have to repeat my constantly be re redrafting my emails um, and whatnot. So it's, it's super customizable. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. Um, yeah. There's so many different things you can integrate it with too. So a lot of the systems that you're already using, you can integrate them. You can integrate Google forms and, and lead sources of all kinds. Um, MailChimp, bomb, bomb. There's all kinds of integrations and things that you can do with it to make the workflows really come to life and serve you and your team. So um well, other question I wanted to chat through really quickly was somebody asked, I can't even find it now, um, but I remember seeing it. Somebody asked, how do you get your agents to use it? That's our problem. We can't get our agents to use it. Um, I saw that somewhere. I can't find it now. Yeah, I mean, for, for so when so when I ran my, my brokerage, part of our, our, our value add was providing each agent with, with this complimentary. Um, some agents were, you know, we all know that uh, the technology ad adoption uh, with agents is fairly low. Um, and so the way I, I mean, I basically just made them use it. I'm like, if, if you're going to, you know, be an agent here, you're, you're going to use this. Like, I don't care if you don't keep track of stuff, but once you start a transaction, this is how we uh, do our compliance. This is how we, you know, communicate with, with all the different members. So you will use it even if you don't want to use it for your extra CRM, uh, if you want to use something else. But um, when it came to the, the processes for a transaction, we required it. Um, and we provide training and stuff to, to, you know, as if it wasn't easy enough already, but we provided training on it as well. So, and obviously all the workflows, which is really yeah, and made it super easy. And, and I had like a new agent who once I trained them on, they're like, this is amazing. Cause it was actually teaching them how to do real estate because, you know, you start your workflow and it says, these are the steps to do. This is what you, you know, this is how the process works. So it also kind of, you know, makes it a lot easier for new agents who don't know what they're doing yet. Yeah, and it looks like a couple of people are asking the same question, just kind of reiterating the same thing here. And I would say yes. Um, I'm a big fan of just putting your foot down and making them do it. And that's my personal take on it. Um, and I've seen, we've seen teams that have requirements around CRM compliance. And if their agents are not updating things, they turn off leads or, I mean, they take other actions to really put accountability on the agents to update things. Um, so you could go that route, but I do think just kind of putting your foot down and holding them accountable regularly, just don't let it slip. Don't let it slide. You know, every week, every couple of days, be going in there and remind them what they're supposed to be doing and what you expect of them. But I will say there's also some really cool things that people do with text messages and other reminders, um, because you can build those into your workflows too. So if there's a point at the transaction or the listing that your agent is supposed to be doing some of the work. So I'm just assuming uh, a, a team dynamic of team leader, maybe there's a transaction coordinator and there's an agent. The transaction coordinator's in there doing things. And when the transaction coordinator needs to wait for the agent to do something, you can trigger a text message reminder that says, hey, you got to do this thing. And the agent can then pull up the app or, or sit down at their computer and update the task list. So you can do some creative things that way as well. But at the end of the day, somebody's just got to make them do it and really help them understand the importance and why we're doing that. That's why every time we get on a webinar, and Christian and I were talking about this yesterday, we talk about why at the beginning of every webinar because you have to have the emotional will within you and your team and the culture needs to be built to get the CRM up to speed and to keep it up to speed and up to date with everything that's going on. Because at the end of the day, they're your leads. As a team leader, it's your business. They're your leads, they're your resources. And there needs to be some accountability from the agents to update and, and keep things rolling that way. Yeah. And, and I'll add any other that, comments on that point, Christian? Yeah. And, and I'll add that, you know, even if you can't get your agents to like live in Realvolve, like, you know, I do, um, you could tell me hey, just every morning you're going to get an email from Realvolve 
it tells you what the tasks are. You know, click on each of those tasks because it'll go directly. It'll open Realvolve, go right to that task, and it's super easy. Uh, sometimes the email is actually easier to decipher than when you're you know poking around inside Realvolve. So just tell them, hey, just do the task on on your email every day. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a transaction calendar that we're looking at here. So very similar. You've got a transaction for this property. And same thing, it's creating a calendar and you've got a color coding system, et cetera. Anything else to comment on here? Um, yes, I mean, I've built my workflow so that they flow into each other, you know. Um, and so once uh, once an offer is accepted on, you know, that, that previous screen we were looking at, um, you know, goes from, from pre-listing to a, uh, now the listing's active workflow and then into this, uh, what we're looking at with it, it being pending. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's activities on there that create the next workflow so that you don't have to remember, okay, what do I need to do? Like literally walks you through the entire process um, to closing and then follow up, you know, sequence of asking for reviews and, Keep in touch with them, adding them to, um, you know, if you have like a, you know, after like a, a sequence, like we use HomeBot, you know, so it, it reminds the agent to add them, you know, to, to the past client to HomeBot and stuff. So um, it, it covers everything from preparing the listing to closing and then following up afterwards. Yeah. So for you, it goes from, from lead to, let's just say, you know, you got a listing contract and it's pre-listing. And so you get one workflow starts the next. Then once you get an offer and it's under contract, it starts that workflow automatically for you. Yep. Once you close, it starts your get reviews workflow automatically for you, which is yep. then just, um, yeah, it's not necessarily attached to any listing or any transaction. Now that's attached to the contact record. And so you're going to be following up with them years into the future. I'm assuming. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it also reminds me to, you know, uh, one thing I found pretty key is, you know, it, I have it, have the workflow set up to you know, on January 15th of each year, it reminds me to send out like the final settlement statements uh, and uh, just, you know, Hey, taxes are coming up. Here's your final settlement statement. It gives me another touch point. Um, and that, and that one's nice. Cause it's static. You know, it's not based on when it closes, just like anything that closes in 2021 on January 15th, 2022, mm -hmm. it's going to remind me to send those out to all my clients. And that's a good task for a TC to do. Got it. So you work off of this calendar screen or are you working off of your task list in Realvolve mostly? Uh, primarily calendar screen. Um, and so this is, you know, how the, uh, how the, the tasks are, are accomplished. You know, when you, when you click on a specific task, it gives you a description, who it's assigned to, what property, if it's a property uh, or transaction, um, it then pulls up my, my checklist. And so um, I'll typically, you know, go through the checklist. Um, if, if it's a task that's assigned to you know, my assistant or TC or something, they may not you know, have the uh, institutional knowledge or whatever that, that I have, I'll put in the description exactly how to accomplish each, each of these tasks. Um, but it's you know, like this one specifically, you know, once you accomplish, once you check off each of the chat checklists, then it activates, uh, okay, now send this email to this person and it's templated out. You can either just send it like it is uh, with, um, you know, merge fields and everything included, or you can, or you can edit it and, and customize it to your client or to escrow or whoever you're sending it to. Yeah, that's so cool. So, um, Caroline, Carolyn or Caroline is asking how long did it take for you to customize all of your workflows? Did someone help you or did you do it yourself? Um, I mean, the easiest way is to start with a base level, you know, that gets you 80, 80% of the way there. Um, I started off, I bought, you know, some, some premium workflows and then I just customized them to myself. Cause then you can essentially see, okay, this is how they used it. And I can reverse engineer or tweak specific content or, or requirements start from scratch. It's super, it's super hard. Um, so I definitely recommend, um, I think, I think Revolve has some, some free, some basic templates. Um, mine are also mm -hmm. available, which are uh, very affordable. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, hundred dollars for, you know, like the buyer workflow. Um, so, I mean, that's a great way to, to kind of start um, and then you can customize it, um, you know, to your needs. Yeah. I think some, some of our workflows are, you know, $800 for a package, uh, $1,200 for a package of workflows. Yours are very, very reasonably priced. So it's a bargain in my opinion, if anybody's looking to um, sign up for Realvolve or if you're already using Realvolve and you want to see what Christian's doing, you can look it up. There's C-Town, S-E-A, C-Town, 
Um, you can find those in our workflow library, alphabetical order, or you can do a command F or a control F to find those in our workflow library. Um, so Jerry's asking, is there a consolidated task list that can be sent by text versus an email daily? Yes, you can. You, you can send um, yourself tasks in email, but not via the automated task sender. That's only email. <laughs> so that, that automatic email that you get is only email. If you wanted to build something into your workflows um, about what's due today, you could do that as well. Um, but it won't build you one big comprehensive list automatically. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I do, it's not, not entirely what you're, what you're asking about, but one of the things I do is when uh, I have a client who, you know, buyer or seller who's, who, you know, we're in escrow um, each week on Monday, I'll give them an update, you know, whether or not there's anything happening, I'm going to give them an email update so that they're not wondering. And you can have it set up with a merge field that basically will say, hey, since the last email was sent out, send out every checklist item that was completed. Um, and so I'll do that and it tells, you know, hey, since the last time we emailed, here's what we accomplished for you. You know, and then I'll say, okay, this week, this is what you need to do. This this week, this is what we're going to do. Um, and that's huge with when it comes to client experience because they they know what's happening. Like even on the third week of a transaction, if there's nothing happening, they're going to get an email saying, hey, there's nothing happening. Here's what comes next. Um, but there's merge fields for everything, um, which makes your life way yep. easier. So. I mean, even, yeah. Yeah, pretty, even if you're not using like a, uh, if you have like a TC or an assistant, uh, you can, like, I've got one email that says, okay, we just got under contract. Here is all the contact info and all the, uh, all the transaction info in one email. Um, and that's just pulling directly from, from Realvolve. So I'm not having to manually type all that in there. Yeah, that's the that's stuff that's rad about the workflows. That a lot of people don't know, and you don't really know how cool it is until you actually experience it. But pretty much every field in the database can be pulled into an email or a text message template via our merge fields. So you can pull any information out of the CRM and have that automa automatically sent to anyone involved with any transaction or any listing. It's pretty cool. Um, so you you also talked a little bit um, yesterday about WooFoo forms. So you're using the seller input forms that are feeding automatically into Realvolve and updating contact information, et cetera. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, um, I, I use Wufu Forms. Uh, you could also use Google Forms, but it's essentially the same thing. So like when I'm getting ready for, for a listing walkthrough, I'll preempt the, the conversation walkthrough with, uh, with an email that has a link to a, a Wufu form for a, and that's uh, what, wufoo.com. Um, basically for a, a form I've built out that says, hey, tell me, tell me all about your property. Um, and it, it helps them to kind of brag on uh, their property, what they love about it, all that kind of stuff. Once they fill that out, um, it, it triggers, you know, to update their, their contacts in, uh, in Realvolve. So it says, hey, they filled out this form. Um, and, and that's, we haven't really talked about that part of the automation much, but uh, using something like Zapier, you can integrate with, you know, dozens of different platforms, which is, is huge in, you know, not being, not having to spend your time redundantly entering stuff, you know, between um, going back and forth, you know, updating uh, contacts in, in MailChimp, uh, you know, if you're doing an email list in Wufoo Forms or Google Docs or Google Forms, um, you know, sending specific emails that, that will create contacts. If you're doing, you know, lead, uh, lead gen type stuff, um, Eventbrite, you know, Facebook ads, like all this, you can integrate into, um, into Realvolve to automatically create and update contacts. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've heard of a couple of other people doing that, but I don't think enough people are doing stuff like that. I mean, you can have these, these questionnaires and forms to make sure that you don't forget certain key pieces of information that you're going to want to know about people but you can also do that along the way, right? So in, within a workflow, you can have fields on the contact record or in the transaction pop up in your task list. So it can be right there on the calendar. And when you fill it in, it saves it to the transaction or it saves it to the contact. Um, so there's all kinds of things that stay, save time on the data entry, which is nobody's, nobody's favorite thing to do in this industry, but there's just a lot of it to be done. So automating any little piece saves so much time and so much um, hassle, right? Frustration. Yep, exactly. So um, I was talking to Jacob 
and Jacob told me that you had a conversation with him. Jacob's a, a member of the team here at RealVolve. And Christian, Jacob told me that when you were talking, he was mentioning how we're hearing from a lot of people that they're struggling in real estate. And then we hear from other people that they're just killing it right now, having their best year ever. So some people, it's just, it's just feast or famine, depending on who you're talking to. Um, what's your take on that? Why are some people weathering the storm better than others? You know, um, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing it's because people who have set up their business, uh, you know, long-term are starting to see, starting to see that the tipping point, um, you know, if you haven't set so up people that are playing the long game, but people that are playing the long game are doing well. Yeah. You know, and I mean, there's all sorts of things that make a real estate agent uh, successful um, from, you know, where you're getting your, your new clients from, whether you're buying leads or you're generating your own, you know, via Facebook or doing virtual events for, you know, educational purposes, like a home buyer class um, or just doubling down on past clients and referrals. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of content marketing, you know, which is why, you know, I've got like the, the rethink real estate podcast and uh, do a local podcast. And before COVID, you know, we did a lot of community events and stuff. Um, but I mean, all of that is geared towards the long game of attraction marketing, you know, um, you know, doing videos on YouTube, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and mm -hmm. all that, all that flows into, um, you know, it, it, because, you know, we all know that there's, there's not like a, a one, there's not one system or one, you know, tech solution for all of your real estate needs. And so you've got all these, you know, different systems that, that don't talk to each other, which is really frustrating and challenging, which is really where uh, something like, you know, Realvolve integrating with, with Zapier is, is so helpful is that it can, it can piece together all these things. So you have one place to go to instead of having to check, you know, five different databases, um, you know, and, and trying to like keep track of, you know, where you are with each client, with each transaction. Um, with, with all that compliance stuff, you know? Right. So while people are working on some of the short term, they should also keep in mind the long game and, and build things correctly so that um, we can all have more consistent business going forward. Yep. So and, um, and I will, I will say you know, real quick, I, I don't know if I'm, you know, preaching to the choir here, if everyone, you know, on the call is already sold on, you know, automation workflows and processes. Um, but if you're not, it can be very, very daunting to, to, you know, look at maybe what I've built out and say, I, I have no idea how I'd get there. Um, I didn't start off here. You know, I start off with a much different process. And as I go, as I find, you know, new ways to do things or a new trick here or some, some way to take uh, something off my plate through automation or one of the workflows, you know, I, I built that out. So it's taken years to get to this place. So don't, uh, don't feel like, you know, you've got to have it all figured out and you've got to know exactly what your end game is. Um, you'll, you'll figure it out as, as you go, but the, the most, the most important thing is, is starting, you know, start somewhere. Right. So, um, we're about 45 minutes in here. I do want to just kind of wind down, make sure that we get everybody's questions answered if there's any follow-up questions that anybody has. And I want to talk a little, I want to plug a couple of things here. So first thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, Christian mentioned getting started with some workflows that we have in our premium workflow library. There are free workflows. There are some paid workflows. Um, I think Christians are a great place to start. I think uh, because they're very affordable. I also think that we have, um, a, I mean, we have probably the best onboarding program in the real estate industry um, amongst all of our competitors. I would put our navigator program hands down is better than any system that I've seen. Um, and I've been in the, in the real estate technology world for a while now. We went all in by hiring as many real estate agents, transaction coordinators, listing coordinators as we could. So um, we've got people with experience actually running transactions, working on a team. They understand the pains and they understand workflows at a really deep level. And you could go through our Navigator program. So that's a premium service that we provide. If you sign up for Realvolve or are interested in talking to us about Realvolve, you should ask about the Navigator program because we can get people fully up to speed, customized workflows, team all trained up relatively quickly. And if you want to go the more do it yourself route, I would still recommend taking a look at something like what Christian has put together with those workflows. So 
those are two main directions you that I would recommend people go. I don't recommend starting from scratch and trying to build your own. So either get some workflows and start there or join our navigator program. Um, and these folks are phenomenal that we have on our team, true professionals that know the industry and know how to get technology working for you and your team um, in a very customized, tailored, white glove way to make sure that you're up to speed. And like I said earlier, um, just check it out. You got nothing to lose. Um, go to realvolve.com forward slash demo and schedule some time. We'll talk through what you're doing in your business and see if we might be a good fit. We also have a product called Firepoint that is an IDX website um, with some lead distribution, lead generation services, um, team accountability on the lead side, some really cool things there. So um, they're integrated products, but um, I would recommend going to realvolve.com forward slash demo and get a demo there first. And we can talk about what you need and, and which product might be the best fit. Um, so Christian, tell me a little bit more about your podcast. So I know we're working or we're look, um, sorry. So yeah, tell me about your podcast because I would love to plug that. I got a sure. message there and I got distracted and lost my train of thought. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so it's called the Rethink Real Estate Podcast. Uh, I've been doing it for a couple of years now with, uh, with some co-hosts that I met at uh, Inman, Inman Connects uh, years ago. Um, and it is geared towards, you know, providing uh, actionable takeaways for agents and brokers. Um, so you, you can obviously find it on, you know, Apple uh, or you can go to the dedicated website at rtrepodcast.com. Um, you yeah, know, we're, we're working with Realvolve. So if you uh, actually listen, you know, you'll, you'll get a code uh, if maybe you want the workflows for a discounted value, uh, the ones that I built out. So um, there's a little, little plug to go, go listen to, listen to the podcast. But, um, and, and if you, you know, have any questions about, about how I'm doing things specifically, uh, obviously I'm on, on Facebook and Instagram um, under, you know, C-Town team uh, or C-Town real estate, if you Google it. So. Cool. Any, uh, any other questions and Cody pasted the uh, URL to the podcast there in the chat. So there you go. That's it. Any other questions from anybody before we wrap it up? Questions about Realvolve, questions about how we do something, questions about integrations, specific questions for Christian. We've got another minute or two. If there's no more questions, we'll wrap it up. If you have a question, please chime in. Otherwise, we'll see you at realvolve.com forward slash demo. Looks like we got to everybody. Cody's, thank you for the help on answering all those questions, Cody. All right, I think that's it. All right. Thank you so much, Christian. Really appreciate you taking the time again to spend with us. And um, I love the unique things that you're doing with, uh, with Realvolve workflows. It's really cool to see how far you've come. I remember watching a video that you shot, I don't know, a couple of years ago now. Um, so to see how much you're doing with Realvolve now is really exciting and encouraging. So appreciate your support and thank you for helping us. Sure. Thanks, Dale. Hope it was helpful and, uh, and beneficial to, uh, to the watchers. Bye, Christian. Bye, everybody. Right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. See ya.